absolutely perfect. It is as orange as my pruners. A perfect ornament to this lush green plant. This is gonna be spicy as f I grow it, I cook it, and farm to table. Broccoli, peppercorn, and basil. Zucchini is a staple. I never thought I'd see potting mix around colonies and COVID quarantine. Never. About to hit the garden up. The name's Al Joe, I farm it up. I got seeds, I got time. Plus, I'm hungry, so let's start it up. Let's go! Al Joe. Al Joe. During a time of such uncertainty and anxiety, it is so important to have a purpose in your daily life. You can take control of your diet, get in touch with your human roots, and create your own solution to food insecurity. Make the best of this quarantine by growing what you eat. What up, family? Al Joe from Al Joe Gardening. And I'm here today I'm gonna be planting this habanero seedling that I got from a nursery. Let's get to it. I'm excited just to be able to add to my beautiful garden. I already have some pepper plants over here. A golden California sweet bell pepper on the right. And then over here in this single pot, I have green bell peppers. But let's get to the habanero pepper. Super hot, super spicy, and so is this video. <laughs> So I got this giant bale of hay. And I'm gonna use this as an organic mulch because I'm gonna put it on top uh, just to prevent any bugs from getting to the dirt, I mean, as much as it can. And then it will also allow for the moisture to be retained a little bit better inside the pot. You don't want the mulch to overcrowd the plant because it will actually rot the stem. So I'm gonna kind of spread it from the middle here and keep it somewhat apart so that the leaves can grow outward, upward, but the mulch will still retain the moisture and break down, providing nutrients to the soil below. A habanero pepper, mulched on top, providing nutrients to the soil below. I'm just allowing this to sit here. I'm gonna add it to my other pepper plants. It's gonna look great. Uh, one tip. Uh, this stuff, this hay bale here, I actually got a splinter when I was using my bare hands. I just grabbed it like this. Ah, I even got a So just keep that in mind when you mulch with straw. So let's go add it to my other plants. So gratifying. My third pepper plant, third variety. Many more to come. Before that, I'm gonna slap a label on it. Make sure I know what it is, because I have plenty of plants here. If I can find it. Aha! <laughs> Habanero pepper transplanted today, 6-7. Uh, I just noted that it was a seedling from a nursery, not something I started from seed. I'm gonna slap that on there. We're good to go. Welcome back to my garden. It is July 3rd. This is the habanero pepper. I planted it on June 7th, so it's been almost a month. And I mean, this thing is almost tripled in size from what it used to be. One stem, this was just, oh shit. It's all good, it's all good. It's just one initial plant. And these stems that were initially just leaves have branched out. I've been using a liquid fertilizer every week just for the only this week and last week because I wanted to allow it to, to settle in the pot. So didn't want to shock it the first week I planted it. Beautiful flowers already coming out after almost four weeks. I do spot a couple holes in the leaves. I'm not sure what exactly is feeding on this. Still haven't been able to find the culprit, but that's not an issue because clearly it's not affecting the production of the buds. But the habanero still continues to thrive to find a way. And I just, I can't wait for the harvest. A month and a half later, and look at this habanero pepper plant. The progress, you can actually see one pepper starting to form. Look at this. So it's gonna get a little bit bigger than this. Love the shape, it's gonna change colors. And look how many other blossoms there are. I mean, if these all turn to peppers, I'm gonna have way too many habaneros. But I did have a bit of a setback. You see above this pepper? This stump here, this little, looks like something took it off. There's another one. So it literally got eaten like this. This is why it looks lopsided. You know, one of my uncles, he does some gardening and he told me that this was the sign of a deer. 
seven weeks later after planting the seedling of the habanero pepper. And look at how small this, this pot is compared to how big it's become. We had a minor setback. The deer took off this side, but this is growing wonderfully after seven weeks. And look at this. I mean, this looks exceptional. And right next to it, another one. Ooh, I'm excited to get into these. And look how many buds there are coming up. This thing is huge, Nicole. Look at this plant. Hey, Penny. Hey, baby. What up, guys? Back in the garden. I made an insane discovery today on my habanero peppers. Look at all the different buds here. Look at all the small peppers. I mean, these things are cooking. And I'm looking at these peppers. I'm like, oh, these are cool blossoms. And then, whoa, instantly I see this. And it looks like the blossom. It kind of blends in. But if you look even closer, it's actually a hornworm. Sometimes these are on tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and they just ravage leaves. But what really surprised me about this is not that the, the hornworm was there. It was the, all these little white things on them. And those are actually eggs, eggs of parasitic wasps. And clearly this hornworm is not moving, which is a good thing. This is actually taken over by the parasitic wasp, which stung it, injected it with poison, and laid its eggs all over the outside of this body. Larva, I guess, are going to bury inside the hornworm and eat the insides, and then eventually hatch into their full form. But slowly, they will eat this thing from the inside out. These are actually beneficial insects, these parasitic wasps. So I kind of want to let it live, see what happens, and eventually um, see if they'll continue to wreak havoc on some of these pests that are in my garden. I'll check back in. Got so many flowers, as you can see. I'll point them out individually. There are so many, more than I can even imagine, right? But also, there's at least seven peppers growing. But hey, I found something this morning, and it's the first habanero pepper to turn color. Look at that beautiful, bright orange. It's gonna be so spicy, I'm really not ready for it. Look at all of these peppers. They look incredible. So it's time to pick this one. It's gonna drop. Boop. Absolutely perfect. It is as orange as my pruners. A perfect ornament to this lush green plant. And this is gonna be spicy as fuck. So maybe use it for some curry. My brother has a really nice curry recipe. He uses a little bit of a habanero. Enough for me to almost hate myself as I was eating it, but not enough to shit my pants. Holy, he is eating from the inside out. Oh my goodness. This is just disgusting, honestly. This is the result of a parasitic wasp that has absolutely demolished this garden pest. And it has been fascinating to watch with you guys. Oh boy, we got our second and third beautiful habanero peppers. I mean, look at the deepness of these colors. Absolutely uniform on this one. No issues whatsoever here. Plenty more to come. I mean, look at how many blossoms there are and look at how many new peppers are going to be forming. Let's grab some of these abundant peppers. I would take a bite out of it, but I'm not trying to kill myself. So we're just going to enjoy it at a later date. The habanero continued to flourish after four months, even as the temperatures dropped. So you should drop a like and subscribe for more of my quarantine journey. Not next week, 
all right, fine. You can start on the weekend. I get it. You're busy with other stuff. But start growing ASAP, ASAP. because you'll never find a hobby as mentally gratifying and stomach filling as gardening is. It takes less than 30 minutes a day and saves lots of cash in the long term. Join me in uplifting yourself, your family, and our community for generations to come.